Hello everybody, my name is Ord, and welcome back to Ord Narrations. Cheating comes in many forms, not always sexual. One of the most common types is emotional cheating, wherein one party kind of overshares and forms an attachment with someone else outside of the relationship, with or without their partner's knowledge. So, today we'll be reading a story about a guy who thinks his ex had an emotional affair, then two weeks after the breakup, they got together. How can I ever trust again? This is a bit of a long post, a bit of a long read, but it's, it's, it's well worth it. So, let's make a start. This is going to be long, so thank you to everybody who takes the time to read this. Please note that I'm telling you this story from my point of view. Therefore, the story will not be unbiased. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments and also criticize me. I don't just want to move on, but improve myself. Currently, I have a lot of negative thoughts about my ex-girlfriend. But I don't want to blame it all on her. I had trust issues during the relationship, but now they've gotten even worse. I don't know if I can ever open my heart again to another person. We broke up last month, so this is all pretty fresh. I will refer to my ex-girlfriend as X, and to the guy I think she had an emotional affair with as John. There will be another guy, let's name him Jim. X and I were together for seven years, and lived together pretty much from the beginning. She brought a dog to the relationship that I took care of most of the time. We wanted to marry and have kids, even though she told me she didn't want to marry any more two or three years ago. A little side note here, as I think this is important, because she said that my jealousy gave her too much pressure, in brackets. And yeah, I also want to justify myself a little bit. The ex has a lot of male friends and went out quite often. There were male and female friends, and she sometimes just met with the male friends. And sometimes they went out as two, and so... It was an ex and one of her male friends. These meetings happening IRL and online, but it didn't bother me. However, there were two situations where I was very jealous. And her main argument was that if it wasn't a guy, we wouldn't even be talking about this. In my opinion, gender matters, but it was more than just that. The gender doesn't matter. It's more who your part, what, what gender your partner's attracted to. Like if you're with someone who's bi, then you could be sus of both. Do you know what I mean? For example, anyway. Anyway. <clears throat> so, it was about two or three years ago during the pandemic when we almost never spent time together anymore because she was playing games with Jim. During this time, she didn't go out and stayed home most of the time. This went on for a few months. They pulled all-nighters, and almost every waking moment, she was playing online with Jim. I slept alone most of the time and felt very lonely in the relationship, and I had the feeling she completely lost interest in me. I worked a lot. 40 to 50 hours a week, and did all of the housework, which was also stressful, because it was the housework for the two of us. Our dog got sick, and I also had to go out with him at night a lot. This, the sickness of our dog, was maybe just for one week, but it drained a lot out of me, as I had to work full time starting in the morning with almost no sleep. Most of the time she slept during the afternoon. This is the time I got home. During this period she didn't have a job, and it was a tough time for her, because she had mental problems and was suicidal. I bottled up a lot of emotions because it was very tough for me, but I didn't want to confront her for five to six months. I knew she needed time to heal, but one day I told her the way she handles the situation, it won't get better. We then spoke about the relationship, and I told her how I felt because she's spending a lot of time with gaming slash gym, and I didn't get any attention. We then argued a few times, and she told me that gaming and sleeping all day is what she currently wants. I thought of it as an addiction to gaming to escape reality because almost every waking moment she was playing online games with Jim. At the same time, I was jealous of Jim and thought that there was more to it. She was hurt because I was not trusting her and there was a lot of other stuff which doesn't really matter. You know, when you argue a lot, but in the end you don't even know what you're arguing about. But through arguing and speaking to each other about the situation, she told me that she was suicidal. She also told me that she doesn't want to get married anymore and doesn't want to have children. Ooh, that's quite a turnaround. It could just be that she's feeling down and is in a bit of a rough patch, which is what it sounds like. It carries on. We looked for therapy. She got one and it got better. After a year of being jobless, she got a new job. She went out more often and started with sports. The relationship had ups and downs during that time. I would say more downs than ups. In that time, she also told me that she wanted to have children again, but still didn't want to marry. There was also a time where she wanted to have children right at the moment and one time when her period was off. She thought she was pregnant, and we found out she wasn't. She was pretty down and crying a lot. It's really sad to hear. So, let's move to the main part. It all started last year, 
X got the number of John from her sister because he was a gamer like her. John is a co-worker of the ex's sister, and John was playing games online, mostly with my ex, and very rarely when I was also there. During that time, I really didn't think much of John. One day I got sick pretty bad and slept a whole lot during the day. When I woke up in the evening, I asked her if she wanted to do something with me, and she said no every time. So I played games with my friends online. Because I started playing late, I also went to bed later than normal, about one or two hours later than my ex. Even when I got better, we still didn't do much together. She never had time for me, from my perspective. I asked her every day if she wanted to do something with me, and she still said no every time. I felt something was off, and I further spent my time with my friends or alone. One day, she came home from work, and we talked about our day, and she casually told me that John had visited her at her workplace. I got a very bad gut feeling from this, because he lived about one hour away, and they never met IRL before, as far as I know. Immediately, I told her about my feelings, and she got pretty defensive over him. Later on, she talked to her sister and said that this is something normal that John would do. I then told her that doesn't justify anything. If a guy walks around kissing strangers on the lips, is that okay? Just because it's something he's doing? Is what I said to her. During this argument, it also turned out that she and John had been chatting for the past weeks, pretty much from morning till evening. It all started pretty much when I got sick. She said she felt lonely because I was playing with friends. She didn't have anyone to talk to, and I didn't give her any attention. And John was the person that gave her what she needed during this time, but just as a friend and nothing more. In the end, I felt bad for getting so jealous and not giving her the attention she needed. But you were only put into that position of having to play with your friends because she was already playing with John and Jim so much. It continues. I apologized. She told me what she needed from this relationship, e.g. going to sleep together, going to restaurants more often, and stuff like this. I was fine with it because it was also what I wanted, and I knew the feeling of feeling lonely in a relationship. Our relationship got better, and we spent a lot of time together, went out a lot, and we're pretty happy, I would say. She even told me from time to time that she's as happy as she's never been before. About six months later, she and her sister were invited to John's without me. I didn't say anything, and she went. It was weird for me. After she came home, I needed to talk because I had a really bad gut feeling. What happened six months prior still bothered me, and I'd given it some more thought. She accused me of not giving her enough attention, even though she turned me down every time I suggested doing something together. So I confronted her again, and we argued. In this argument, I asked her if she would show me her chat with John, and she did. I know this was not cool from my side, and it's her privacy. This is classic behavior, though. Trying to pin it on OP instead of on her own behavior. She's like giving herself the opportunity to do it by turning you down and then blaming you for not doing stuff together. In the chat, I saw they flirted a lot. She then told me that in the beginning, she thought John had a crush on her, but later she figured he's just trolling. Frankly, a girl who thinks a guy has a crush on her while she's in a relationship, or a guy, just goes both ways, and humors it, is already cheating. You're well aware that someone's trying to get in your pants. You're still there. What are you doing? You should be single. I was very upset and accused her of an emotional affair, quite so. It's hurt her a lot, because I often say stuff like cheaters are worse than trash, and told her more often that this is one thing I cannot forgive. I know this is not physical cheating, but for me, this is just as bad. Honestly, if not worse. If not worse. Effectively, what's happening with an emotional affair is... The partner's trying to effectively monkey branch. She wants to have like a toe dip with a new person. I'm saying she, but they. Um, and then if it's going well, we'll jump ship with like no warning and absolutely blindside the other party generally. So it continues. I told her that she exceeded my boundaries. And when we spoke, she told me that she likes to meet new people. Stuff that, in my opinion, didn't relate much to the situation. But briefly summarized. She didn't want to make a compromise and wanted to live the way she wants. Honestly, at that point, I wanted to end the relationship, but couldn't because her dog is very important to me and it would break his heart. Yeah, unfortunately, she's actually given you her answer there. She doesn't care how you feel. You know, you've just made it very expressly clear that you're very uncomfortable and you dislike the situation. It upsets you. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Sounds like a lovely woman. A few days passed, and we didn't speak about the situation. Somehow the relationship got better, and I didn't bring up John anymore. 
and then she got a new job at her sister and John's company. This was last month, and our relationship got weird. It felt like I'm no longer interesting for her. She apparently spent a lot of time with John, and I don't know exactly what they're speaking about, but what is weird for me? When we're playing games, she told me she wants to invite John, but she didn't invite him until that day because I'm jealous of him. She talked to him about this, so she told him that I'm jealous of him, and that's why she isn't inviting him. I find it weird that they speak about this. This goes further, as apparently he told her he wouldn't try anything with her because he finds cheating unattractive. In my opinion, this isn't something you should speak to outside of the relationship, and especially not to the guy. Little side note, John was also in a relationship. Ah, sounds like they're a match made in heaven then. There's a quote, there's a quote somewhere, I don't know who says it, but if they'll cheat for you, they'll cheat on you. I imagine in six months time, you'll find that they have probably split up and or are both cheating on each other. Low morals. It continues, we still spend time together, but we didn't really talk to each other much, or at least not how we used to. It was very superficial. Well, she also didn't write to me anymore when we were both at work. And when I wrote to her, the answers were always very short. Most of the time, she didn't even ask how I felt. A few days passed, and I realized I was in a very dark place. I couldn't show any emotions anymore, and spend a lot of time training. The only times I felt something were when I was sparring in martial arts, and the adrenaline kicked in. At work, I missed meetings and spaced out, and this never happened before. I needed to speak to her about this, about how I felt, and I told her that our relationship is superficial and I don't have the feeling that she has any interest in me or cares about the relationship. On that day, she ended the relationship. We're still living together, but she's moving out at the end of the month. Our mutual friend told me that X is together with John now, but doesn't want me to know. The ex told her after our breakup that she's developed feelings for John. This mutual friend knew about the whole situation and found the situation very strange. Thus, she told me. They apparently came together two weeks after our breakup. Ah, uh, yeah, that's pretty standard with emotional cheating. Two weeks is a long enough period where, like, it looks like it could be natural, but short enough where they don't actually have to wait any longer. And that'll only be when they publicly did it. They probably were together the whole time, unfortunately. I don't know when John ended his relationship, but until our breakup, he must have been in a relationship. Our mutual friend also told me that X is afraid of me, which explains why she's locking the door in her room. John also won't be here to help her move the furniture because she's afraid I'll beat him up. This information hurts because I never got physical, and I'm a pretty calm guy even in a very stressful situation. I would never hurt anybody, except if it's really necessary, like if somebody attacks you or a robbery or some extreme situation, or when competing in sport. I train MMA, which is violent, yes, and in the public eye, especially some of the UFC fighters seem like nasty guys. But believe me, most of the time it's an act by them to sell fights. And we MMA guys are pretty chill and can control our temper slash anger better than the average human. At least this is my experience in the gym where I train. Of course, there will be exceptions. Anyway, in my opinion, my ex knows this as she has some more insight into the sport through me. We had some pretty nasty arguments where she would shut the door and throw stuff around and scream. In these situations, I remained calm. I also had angry moments that she witnessed, but not against her. Usually I train like a madman when I'm angry. She saw me do it a few times. Also clips of me training on sandbags. But she saw me resolve a lot of the conflicts without ever getting physical and only by using words. And some of these conflicts were very heated. For example, Fights in my old neighborhood. I'm a lightweight, so I'm not one of those big muscle guys. I just look fit. I'm afraid something fundamental is wrong with me. That I seem so violent to her. I just feel really bad right now and not worthy of love. And on top of that, a person that I opened my heart to for seven years is so afraid of me, she's locking her door. Anyways, I have very good friends that I spoke to about the whole breakup situation, except the fact that she's afraid of me because I only learned that recently. Otherwise, I told them everything. They helped me tons. I don't feel lonely anymore, but I can't say I'm happy, though I'm really glad the relationship is over. I want to go full no contact, but I'm not sure if I can leave the dog. I love him so much and he loves me. She takes him as it's her dog, but she wants to bring him to me from time to time because she knows how much the dog loves me. If I knew for sure that the dog is happy without me, I could go full no contact. I just want the best for him. What's the best solution here? My main problem is... My trust got shattered so hard. It's not like I miss her or want her back. I want her out of my life. 
how can I trust how can I ever trust anybody? Because my mindset right now is that every relationship is doomed to end and a person can change in a very short time. Because the way she acts and the fact that she got together with John two weeks after a seven year long relationship feels so real to me. I don't recognize her at all. And it feels like the seven years meant nothing to her, even though I really gave my best. Did she really have an emotional affair? Or is this all in my head? It's definitely not all in your head. The two weeks thing is says enough. Like, you don't get into a relationship after knowing someone for two weeks, which means that she's had feelings for more than two weeks. I reckon what's happened is, in the late night gaming sessions, they probably got into some really deep talks. Which is probably why they ended up talking like a meta conversation about your relationship. John probably did this on purpose. You know, if he's that kind of person, he's going to be a bit shifty. <clears throat> and also he's hiding away from you because he knows you, he's done you dirty. Someone commented saying, does it matter? The thing is, she called the relationship off and it was not the best relationship. You have your dignity, your promises were not broken, you're 32, and so you can push for a work promotion and find someone who's happy to be with you on your journey. You need to change your focus back on yourself, what you want, what you can achieve. You've been set free, so go find your single happy self again. Have you ever skydived, bought a racing car, motorbike, learn guitar, or restart your hobbies you gave up? Definitely in terms of the hobbies, that's fantastic advice, but... I think it's just a bit of it's a, it's a little bit blunt. It's a little bit blunt. The emotional reconnection, the emotional rebuilding, take time. You'll need to definitely focus on basically mixing with people, not just women, not just women. the The sports will definitely help with that. Someone replied to this saying, "The betrayal hurts as she slash they exploited your trust, but you dodged a bullet there. Look at it this way." You did not marry her, and people are a product of their tendencies and behavior. This will be repeated. Even if they marry and have children, they will always be suspicious of each other because they know who they are and what they have done. They continue saying, if they were so upright, there would not have been this plausible deniability. Coincidences, trust me. Grieve and vent and move on with it, living a better life. It is guaranteed to be better because the people who do not truly see your worth are not in it. Someone else commented saying, Hi OP, the only thing I could advise you is be prepared to get her to fuck off when she comes crawling for you to take her back. Because, believe me, she will. Do not ever take a cheater back. This is fantastic advice. I completely agree with this. At the end of the day, she's made her bed and she now has to lie in it. If he ditches her because he's a low moral person, you know, after manipulating her into leaving the relationship, because it's probably what happened. If she was in a low point, she would be very vulnerable to manipulation and putting seeds of doubt in her head. And uh, odds are he's taken advantage of that and he'll get bored. But I think like people are saying, you've definitely dodged a bullet here. You've definitely dodged a bullet here. Someone made a comment saying, OP, first you did what you had to do. and She just manipulated you to the point of making you feel guilty. You tried to do things with her many times, talked to her many times, and all of the time she told you no and prioritized her time with Jim and then John. I'm also sure she had an emotional affair with Jim too. And yes, it wasn't two weeks after you broke up. This was far before that, but only came to the public once she wasn't in a relationship with you to make it in her mind that she did not cheat. Well, she is a cheater and you keep her in your house just for the dog. No man said, but it is her dog. So you have to put yourself first and heal you first. I want to repeat, she's a cheater. You told her that cheaters are worse than trash. So why don't you give her a trash bag and tell her that she knows exactly where the trash should go? She gaslit you, she manipulated you, she used you as a meal and a roof ticket. Why after all she's done to you, you keep playing her game. Kick her out ASAP. I agree with this message. I know you want to look after the dog, but the dog will be fine. Dogs are hardy creatures. Unfortunately, it won't understand what's happened, but the dog will be okay. Tell her to bring John and her sister to help move out as fast as she can, and tell her that she's got until tomorrow to leave. You should start therapy and understand that people can change, and that many have issues, but not all are like her. Out there are many good women. Women that want a good guy to respect them and love them as well, like you want. Don't close yourself to love just because of a lost lamb like your ex. They continue saying, good luck, OP. 
and I hope everything starts going well for you. And please kick her out as fast as you can from your department slash house and your life. She already has consumed many of your resources. Don't let her continue to do that. Also expose her to mutuals and parents, both yours and hers, and most importantly to her HR department. Right, okay, bit savage, bit savage. I grew the message here for the most part, which is basically just get her out of your life. Unfortunately, with her still hanging around, you won't be able to move on and start recovering. That process, unfortunately, requires you to be away from the person. Only then will you really be able to like actually relax in your own home. I agree with the advice of getting the sister, maybe not John, because that's just going to be a whole lot of drama, but getting the sister to help move the kit out of the house. And yeah, give her a final date. Be like, you're gone in two days time. Get your stuff out, especially if it's your house. Tricky situation. So what do you think OP should do in this situation? What would you do? If you were in OP's shoes, let me know in the comments. Right, that should do it. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.